hello there. So um, I just got on top of the uh, carrier ship. It's a large ship that uh, carries airplanes. This is the Interpede. It has retired for a while. I forget what year it's retired, and uh, it's probably a diesel, not a um, not a nuclear one. So it's not that large. The one I visited in. Uh, in San Diego is much larger and they don't have these cables that restrict you from actually touching the planes and the other ones you, you do have access to almost everything and you can walk anywhere but in this one they, they do have protection so people can actually do touch or miss so I don't know what to say so let's take a look around now I'm an A62 intruder. This is probably an old airplane. The Grumman F14D Super Tom Cat. What year? only nation to use the Tomcat was Iran. The aircraft were supplied prior to the Islamic Revolution in 1979. Accurate statistics are not available, but the Iranian military claims that Tomcats were highly successful in combat against Iraqi forces during the, the Iran-Iraq War 1980-1988. Iran Tomcats were known to be um, engaged in war against the Islamic State, formerly known as ISIS or ISIL, as recently as November 2015. <laughs> oh. U.S. Navy Tomcat keeps a watchful eye on a Soviet Topolev 295 Bear, a maritime patrol bomber in April 1983. This was a common occurrence at the uh, height of the Cold War 1947-1991. The F-14 Tomcat was the U.S. Navy's first line fighter from 1972 to 2006. It is perhaps the most widely recognized of all Navy fighters thanks to its uh, staring role in the 1986 film Tom Gun. Top Gun, I think, was there was um, probably Tom Cruise in the movie there. Injection seat. Quite large size plane. I think it's a steel plane. Stealth, stealth plane. Sorry. The surface is very interesting. The profile of these. The profile of the uh, of the planes is quite interesting. It must have been well designed, perfectly designed in a specific shape has to have a specific shape so as it crosses through the air at very high speed supersonic let's, let's uh, read a little bit about it so this is the Lockheed A A12 the A12 was the product of a project Oxcart a secret military program to develop a high speed high altitude reconnaissance aircraft First flown in 1962, the A-12 was built by Lockheed's Advanced Development Projects Office, now known as Skunk Works. 
the A-12 was capable of performing sensitive intelligence gathering missions while flying at speeds over Mach 3 or three times the speed of sound. The Central Intelligence Agency, CIA, used A-12s for surveillance missions until the uh, 1968 later versions known as the SR-71 Blackbird served in the reconnaissance and test missions for the U.S. Air Forces in NASA through the 1990s. Flown by CIA pilots, the A-12 was used for strategic reconnaissance over North Vietnam between May 1967 and March 1968. Its primary objective was to look for suspected surface-to-surface -surface missile, SSM, sites. Evidence of SSM facilities was never found, but the A-12 did not determine the location of many surface-to-air missile sites and other strategically important targets. In total, A-12s were flown on 24 missions over Hanoi and the port city of, of Hefong. SAMs were fired at the A-12s on two occasions other than some minor shrapnel damage to one aircraft the A-12s survived unscathed unsca the A-12 on display code named article 122 served as a radar test example early in 1962 at the secluded test site known as area 51 near Groom Lake Nevada a special radar signature lowering paint covered the mostly titanium airframe, which also incorporated radar absorbing materials, massive Pratt and Whitney J58 turbo ramjet engines powered the plane. These engines were used only in the A12 and SR71 Blackbird, the adjacent yellow starter car used a connecting drive shaft to spin the engines at up to 3,200 revolutions per minute and initiate the ignition cycle of the turbo rem jet engine. The cart uses two buck 401 cubic inch wildcat V8 automobile engines of 350 horsepower, similar to those used in American uh, muscle cars of the era. from Syracuse. Worcester. Colonel Brent Richardson. Wings over the Middle East. What do these, what do these three sleek looking yet very different aircraft have in common? One of the answers lies in the Middle East. The, the Kiffer, the Kefir is an Israeli combat aircraft in the American F-16A served in the Gulf War 1990-91. The Israeli Defense Force used both types and both starred in the feature film Iron Eagle 1986 where F-16s flew against Kafirs in cinematic mock combat. But what connection might the A-12 Blackbird have to the Middle East? Before they were retired from service, later variants of the A-12 designed SR-71 flew photo reconnaissance missions over the Middle East and North Africa. Their anticipation ranged from the Yom Kippur War of the 1973 through the post-strike reconnaissance of the 1986 raid on Libya and 1987 reconnaissance missions over the Persian Gulf. The U.S. halted the SR-71 program and war there in 1989-90 with the exception of some record-breaking in NASA test flights after the Gulf War. There were attempts by some military planners to fully reactivate 
blackbirds. These efforts finally ended for financial reasons in 1997. U.S. Navy and Marine Corps borrowed Kaffirs for me. Israeli aircraft industries careful. In the 1960s, Israeli intended to purchase a French fighter jet based on the Dassault Mirage, but a French arms embargo in the wake of the Arab-Israeli Six-Day War 1967 threatened to halt the aircraft's delivery. Israel launched a special operation to create its own fighter. The first Israeli built version of the Mirage, called the uh, Nasher, saw action in the Yom Kippur War 1973. Shortly after, thereafter, an improved version of the plane was dubbed Kafir, meaning Lion Cub in Hebrew. It was powered by a General Electric J-79, the same engine used in the American F-4 Phantom. In 1985, Israel leased 12 Kifers to the uh, U.S. Navy for use as aggressor aircraft in combat training. The Kafir C-1 U.S. Navy designation F-21C simulated the uh, toughest enemies that naval aviators could expect to encounter. Kevers also served with the uh, Marine Corps in 1986 to help train pilots to fly against light maneuverable aircraft. The aircraft on display is a gift of the government of Israel to the uh, Interpid Sea Air and Space Museum. Its tail carries the markings of the Israeli Air Force unit as well as the uh, U.S. Navy and Marine Corps squadrons that flew it. Grumman WF2 E1B Tracer. In 1954, the U.S. Navy began to develop a career based aircraft that would provide early warning surveillance and airborne control functions for their fleet. The result was the Grumman E1B Tracer. The most distinctive feature of the Tracer was the radome, the aerodynamic structure over the wing. The radome concealed a massive dish-type radar system called the APS-82, which had a search radius of 250 miles, 402 kilometers. The tracer was a uh, derivative of the uh, Grumman S-2 tra tracker anti-submarine aircraft and C-1 trader transport aircraft. The tracer had a deeper fuselage, which accommodated a crew of radar operators. It also had a new tail unit with twin fins and red rudders and a central fin to support the red radome. Flying above a career task force, the tracer and its crew of four provided an electronic bird's eye view of the surrounding airspace. The radar extended 
the uh, view of the task force hundreds of miles over the horizon. Detachments of two tracers along with the air crews and supporting personnel were deployed on Interpede for operations off the uh, coast of Vietnam. Tracers provided F-8 Crusaders with information on enemy MiG fighter activity and uh, monitored Alpha strikes over North Vietnam. Tracer entered service in 1995 and 1958 and served abroad and torpedoed until the ship's retirement in 1974. The Tracer renamed in service with the fleet until 1976 when it was replaced by the Grumman E2 Hawk Eyes. The Magdalene F3H2N Demand. The F3H2N Demand was designed and built by the uh, Magdalene Aircraft Corporation, no Boeing, of St. Louis, Missouri. The Demon was designed to counter Russian MiG 15s and 17s. The Demon was also a major design link to McDonnell's phenomenal F 4 Phantom of the 1960s. Designed as a cannon and missile carrying fighter, the Demon made its first flight on August 7, 1951. The aircraft's large wings with power operated slots that aided in providing lift at low speed gave it gave it smooth handling at high altitudes as well as good response during career landings. This aircraft is on loan from the National Museum of Naval Aviation in Pen Pensacola, Florida. In fact, the fighter squadron VF-41, which operated the Demon from Interpede was nicknamed the Demon Drivers. Top speed 647 mph or 1000 km per hour. The um, Ermachi MB339. First flown in 1976, the MB339 was designed to meet the training requirements of the Italian Air Force. The two-seat aircraft allows pilots to develop their skills before moving up to more advanced frontline aircraft. The MB339 has a simple and sturdy design. These qualities make it an ideal training aircraft in a stable weapons platform, effective in training pilots to manage air-to-ground munitions delivery systems, armed with a wide range of guns, missiles, rockets, and bombs on six underwing hard points. The MB-339 can be deployed in a light attack role against ground targets. The MB-339 is powered with a single Rolls-Royce Viper MK 632 turbojet engine. More than 220 of these aircraft are in service today with the air forces around the world. The latest version of the MB-339 is used to train European pilots destined to fly the more sophisticated Eurofighter. The MB-339 displayed here is shown in the colors of the tricolor tricolored tri arrows. The aerial demonstration team of the Italian Air Force, Air Force established in 1961.
Perfecci uh, Tricolor he is one of the only aerobatic teams in the world that uses 10 aircraft at the same time in its air shows. I'm really getting tired of reading all these, these details for you guys. You know, we get to the Dassault Etendard 9M. The Etendard, meaning battle standard or battle flag, was the first French built carrier born jet strike fighter. This sturdy attack aircraft was used abroad. The French carriers. Clemenceau and Foch between 1961 and 1990. Pilots found the single-seat Etondar fun to fly at low altitudes and at high speed. The Etondar was later re redesigned and improved as the Super Etondar, which entered French naval service after 1978 and was flown by Iraqi, Iraq in the uh, Iran-Iraq War 1980-88 and by Argentina in the uh, Falklands War 1982. This Etondar 9M, M for Marine, the French word for Navy. The aircraft is on loan from the French government through the efforts of the French Navy uh, Retired Officer Association. Facts. The Etondard the 9Ms logged more than um, logged more than 180,000 hours of operation including 25,300 career landings and continued in service with the French Navy until 1991. Top speed 590 miles per hour or 1100 km per hour. Maximum altitude 50,000 feet or 15 kilometers and 500 meters. Pilot to free the pilot. Apparently, it's a button from outside in case a plane falls down. People try to help rescue the guy by pushing some certain button or whatever. But it seems like most of these planes have that kind of uh, lever. Now we come to the uh, turn for the uh, um, helicopters. Hillies. This is this seems like a Russian to me. Sikorsky, HH-59 Sea Guard. In 1962, the U.S. Coast Guard selected a modified commercial helicopter, the Sikorsky S-62, first flown in 1958 as a replacement for its aging H-19 Chickasaw saw and H-334 Choctaw helicopters use it for the search and rescue operations. How good was this modified commercial helicopter now known as the H-52? H it has the distinction of having rescued more people than any other helicopter in the world. The Sea Guard was the Coast Guard's first gas turbine powered helicopter. The retractable landing gear as well as the two floats spon sponsons make the Sea Guard fully amphibious. This particular aircraft is painted as one of the as one that was stationed at Floyd Bennett Field in Brooklyn, New York and was donated to the museum by the US Coast Guard. Fact Igor Sikorsky 
was noted for his development of large multi-engine aircraft in Russia during the early 1900s. After immigrating to the United States, he became a noted designer of flying boats for transoceanic flights. Later, he turned his genius to vertical flight, design, designing and building the first particular practical helicopter in the Western Hemisphere, making the first flight in September of 1939, top speed 104 yeah. miles per hour or 167 kilometers per hour. Mesokurovsky HRS H19 Chekhasov the Chickasaw is arguably Sikorsky's most significant helicopter, with the civilian designation S-55. The type's first flight was in November 1949. Military versions were